Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I've seen you guys. I took a break from YouTube so that I could focus on preparing for my LSAT. I took it on the 10th of February, that was what, last week or the week before? And now I am back and I am ready to get back into reading and filming and all things books. So the last time we spoke, I was leaving you on a cliffhanger of sorts because I was reading The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I think that's the name of that book. All of these book names are confusing to me. I literally get them all mixed up. But pretty sure I was reading A Serpent and the Wings of Night and I was like halfway through it. I remember telling you guys that it was a little more romantic and that's what I really wanted. I really wanted romance, but in a fantasy world, you know? And I will say that book was definitely giving fantasy with a romance plot. I don't want to call it a subplot because there it was definitely more significant than the romance that was in Daughter of No Worlds, but it wasn't romance focused. So because of that, we are going to be continuing because I feel like all the books that I read in the last book weren't really romance focused and that's what I wanted. It is still the month of February. It is currently February 19th. Yes, it is Monday, February 19th, and I am still on my quest to find a really good romance fantasy. Romancy. Fantasy romance. That's what we're looking for. So I do want to update you guys. I did finish Serpent in the Wings of Night. I overall rated it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed the romance. I really enjoyed the fantasy. Is it my favorite fantasy romance that I've read? No, but I enjoyed it, and I will be continuing the series, and I will let you guys know when I decide to continue it because I am I've since moved on to other things. All right moving on to what I'm currently reading. I am reading Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. I wasn't planning on starting the series yet. I'm currently in the middle of I don't even know how many series and I think I'm gonna create a dedicated video just to finish the books that I'm or the series that I'm in the middle of reading but I decided to start reading this because my current boyfriend, current boyfriend, I have a boyfriend y'all, a lot has happened but my boyfriend he has wanted to start getting into reading and so I asked him to pick a book that he would like to read or like for us to read together and this was his choice so I'm currently halfway through it all right so I'm currently halfway through it but I don't really know how I feel so far I don't think that I like the way that it's written so basically the way that it's written it's kind of one of those writing styles where they're describing things that have happened in the past instead of describing what's currently happening. So like it's a lot of being told about what's happening instead of actually watching what's taking place fold out, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't really like that kind of writing. Like the book, for example, is not in first person perspective. So we're kind of jumping around from different people's perspectives. Again, I don't really like that. I think I prefer the first person perspective, especially when there's supposed to be a main character, like a, a single main character. So I find that kind of confusing when reading it. I find like the history a little confusing because of the way that it's written. I find that I haven't really been able to connect with the characters, like how I want to or how I feel that I should because of the way that it's written. So I won't say that the book isn't good, but it's not my favorite so far, but it could change. You know, I, I mean, honestly, like as I've gotten used to the writing style, like it's become a little less confusing and a little more or a little less difficult to read because I, I have found myself a bit confused through a large portion of this. So like as it continues on, I get kind of used to how it's written. But again, I'm not a huge fan of the way that it's written. If you've read this book, maybe you'll understand what I'm talking about. Like I, for whatever reason, I can't describe what exactly it is I'm trying to describe. But yeah, so I'm currently what? I'm on chapter, I'm on chapter 27. So I'm like 200 and something pages into the book and I'm still just kind of like, Meh. honestly, I guess like through finishing it, I'll see if it's a series that I want to continue. But so far, I'm not that impressed. I can tell that there's supposed to be some kind of romantic subplot, but I'm still confused as to which character the romantic subplot is supposed to be with like it's just kind of a lot of things are up in the air nothing's really solidified and I don't really like that like if you're gonna tell a story tell a story <laughs> like it's it's almost like it's describing a story as I'm reading it but I will let you guys know 
how I feel as I continue on, but this is my current read. This is the first book, the first romanticy book of the video. So it is currently Wednesday. It is February 21st. It is actually my sister's birthday today. I've honestly spent the majority of today just like cleaning up the house and hang out, taking care of business, but I'm finally sitting down to read. All right, y'all. So I do want to update you on my thoughts on Throne of Glass. Not much has changed. I still am not a huge fan of the way that the book is written. I know previously I was kind of struggling to explain what exactly I, it is that I don't like. And I have since taken notes. Like I literally have note cards. I have freaking post-it notes in the book. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to find it. I have like post-it notes in the book that I've been like writing down so I can remember what exactly I don't like as I'm reading it. But basically I want to give you guys like a quick little synopsis on like the overall plot so that you can understand where I'm coming from and so that I can break it down so that you can understand why I'm not feeling it. Okay starting from the jump. So basically when the book starts I'm trying I'm gonna try to not spoil it too much for you guys because if you do want to read it like I don't want to spoil it for you but Starting off in the beginning, basically, it's kind of laid out that Selena, the main character, she is an assassin. She has been captured by this king and she has been in slavery of sorts for like the past year or so, I think is how long she's been enslaved. And so basically the prince, Prince Dorian, son of the king, he has provided her with the opportunity to win back her freedom by participating in a championship kind of like a Hunger Games-esque kind of, kind of deal, you know? And so if she wins this championship, she earns her freedom, but she also has to work for the king, like as his personal assassin for a X amount of years. That's, that's the overall gist. That's the overall plot. So within that, they're supposed to be, I'm not certain if it's supposed to be a love triangle. And this is like a part of the reason why I'm not a huge fan, because I should know very clearly who the romance is taking place. I should know clearly with whom the romance is taking place. How do I word that? Y'all understand what I'm trying to say, right? Like certain people are supposed to be falling in love and I can't seem to figure out who's supposed to be falling in love because of the way that it's written because it's not making it very clear who's supposed to be falling in love, right? So Selena ha is attracted to Prince Dorian. Dorian is also attracted to Selena, but there's also a third character named Cole who I'm assuming is supposed to be like a, like a third love interest. Like is it supposed to be a love triangle? I don't know. It's not made clear, but basically referring to my notes the, okay the, this is what we know about selena and dorian's relationship they're attracted to one another earlier on in the book uh, one of the ladies accuses selena of being dorian prince dorian's mistress selena takes offense to that okay dorian is a flirt we know this about him dorian sends books to selena for her to read and then he randomly visits her in the middle of the night. And like, hey, I know that I'm like literally listing this off, but this is literally how it played out in the book. Like it was literally like these random occurrences that were happening that were supposed to be the buildup between the relationship between these two characters. Like they literally don't talk to each other the majority of the book. They don't, we don't really see them 
building any kind of relationship like literally when I tell you they don't speak he randomly sends her books because she asks for them one well okay hold on he didn't randomly send them because she requested them but it's not like they had like this pen pal relationship where you know she's he's sending her books she's reading the books you know they're having conversations about it they're discussing these things they're bu building some kind of there's none of that. They do not speak throughout the majority of this book, yet she's falling for him and he's falling for her. The only thing that's really locking them together is the fact that they have a mutual attraction. But again, since they don't speak to each other, it's just that. It's just the attraction. And so like they hang out every now and then and like now they're, spo they're supposed to be experiencing like these feelings and all that. Mm -mm. I don't like it. And so this bring in Cole hopefully I'm like explaining this and you guys are following me and that I don't sound like a madman but there's the the, the other love interest Cole he's the, the the prince's guard he's also guarding Selena because again she's an assassin and they don't trust her so but she you see more of an interaction between her and Cole you see more of them building a relationship and building trust with one another than you see Selena and Prince Doreen building any kind of relationship. So it's overall very confusing because you really don't see Selena and Prince Doreen build much of a relationship but you see Selena build a relationship with Cole. So it just doesn't make sense how the romance subplot is being put together from my perspective at this point in the book at this point in the series. Now I don't know if this is something that she's going to build on in later books but for this to be a first book I'm not really feeling the romance vibes like there wasn't really much romance in my opinion there was no build with really any of the characters any of the characters in a romantic fashion so I for this to be labeled as like a romantic fantasy I don't agree with that. Romance aside just the book overall the way that it's written there are just things that I don't like so like I mentioned before so the main character she's supposed to be an assassin she's supposed to be the best assassin that there ever was but we don't get to see that we don't get to see you know anybody it's just kind of said like it's just kind of like okay she's the best assassin and we're as the reader supposed to just accept that information without any proof or without anything supporting that and so even throughout the book like you know like I said there's supposed to be like challenges that the character is supposed to overcome like she's you know trying to earn her freedom she's trying to become the king's championship become his personal assassin I, I, I guess but we don't really see any of those championships like we don't see any of the trials really you know we they're called tests in the book so she has a series of tests that she has to pass you know and if she doesn't win the test she could either die or she goes home but we only see like a handful of those tests like most of the book is talking about like this evil that's lurking around the castle but it's not it's very vague like everything that we're reading feels very vague instead of watching scenes take place or watch things um play out firsthand those things are being described so for example you know prin the the prince dorian and selena were playing um a game of pool with one another like pool like on the pool table and instead of like describing or instead of like writing the whole pool scene out where we see them have this dialogue or we're able to engage in it or watch this dialogue play out between these two characters it's just like oh yeah they had a lot of jokes and a lot of laughs during that game it's just brushed over it's very vague and so I feel like for this book to be as thick as it is like there's not really a lot of description there's not really a lot of detail overall I'm like okay I know a gist of what this story is supposed to be about but it's it almost feels like it's an outline of a book it almost feels like these are different topics that the author needs to touch on or and, and further elaborate on in the book but then she never further elaborates on it if that makes sense so I don't know if any of you guys have experienced that when reading this book or if you want to read this book I'm just going to give you a heads up about that again I don't know if this is something that's going to change as the series progresses um and then furthermore I heard from like another friend who loves to read she said that it is the book is kind of slow up until the third book so I don't know like I said if all this thing all these things are going to be pieced together later on and if it, this is just as like an initial introduction or is supposed to act as an initial introduction but I don't know I'm just like really not a fan of how it's written as somebody who usually enjoys Sarah J Mass's writing so yeah that's my update I have to hurry up and get dressed so I can go to this dinner for my sister and I will catch you guys later
morning, fellow book people. Let me collect myself. <laughs> so it's been a little bit since I've talked to you guys last because it was my sister's birthday, then it was my mom's birthday, and my dad's birthday on, is on Saturday. So I have like a little bit of time in between to like catch up with you guys amidst all the chaos. I believe last time we spoke, is this like a good angle? Like, can you guys, I don't know. Perhaps this is better? Anyway, so I believe the last time we were speaking, I was still reading Throne of Glass. Now, I believe the last time I spoke with you guys, I was saying that I could see where the author was going. Like, if I didn't know, like, okay, hold on. Let me collect my thoughts. I remember saying that I wasn't really a huge fan of the writing, but I could kind of see where the author was going. I kind of figured that it was like basically like a... How do I explain what I'm trying to say? Like, how do I describe what it is that I'm trying to relate to you? Almost like a, like a, it's a first book. Like, it's, it's very much a first book. Like, I believe that this book, like, after having finished it now, the book is basically giving you just a general synopsis of, like, what's to come. So it's, like, preparing you for the, the rest of the series, if that makes sense. Because, like, reading it, I'm kind of like, okay, like why is everything so vague like why is nothing fully explained like why are things just being you know described to us but we're not actually seeing these things unfold and so because there was like a lot of parts of the book that i just felt like were unnecessary of like you could have took this out and you could have given me like a fight scene or you could have given me like an actual love scene you know like that's kind of how i was feeling when i was reading the book like instead of just describing oh my gosh like they laughed for the rest of the night Let's see the conversation. Like, I want to see what they're laughing about. I want to see what they're, you know, talking about. And, you know, I want to see them form that connection. I want to see her, you know, if, if the, you know, Selena, like the, the main character, like if she's supposed to be the baddest assassin of all time at the age of 18, which I feel like is unrealistic, but it's fantasy. It's fantasy. Like, I want to see her be a bad assassin. Like, I want to see her whoop some tail. And I don't think that I'm crazy for wanting that. But so like that's kind of what my frustration was for like the majority of the book I was, as I was reading it because I'm just like girl what, 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 what's going on like I don't want like vague de like vague details like I want detailed details like I'm detailed it's seven in the morning I can't talk anyway that's just like what my frustration was and that's why I didn't really find the book enjoyable because well I won't say I didn't find it enjoyable it just wasn't my favorite fantasy but I'm gonna be honest I got to the end of the book and it definitely made me more excited to read the rest of the series like I definitely believe that the first book Throne of Glass if you can get through that it'll start to kind of pick up some towards the end and I and I like towards the end I understood why the author wrote it the way that she did like she's literally just preparing you as the reader so that you can kind of have like a general background on the main character on the main love interest because I believe it's going to be a love triangle so a lot kind of happened like right at the end that kind of left me like okay like all right like I'll continue because after like reading it for the majority of the time like I was like do I even want to continue reading this book like do I even like this you know especially because it's like a seven part series so it's like if if all the books are going to be like this I'm a pass you know but I definitely believe like because I've read her writing before and I've loved her writing like I read Aquatar yeah so I read A, a Court of Thorns and Roses and I absolutely ate it up I ate it up I loved it after reading that that's also I was so surprised reading this one and it just like did not seem like the same kind of vibe you know but like I said towards the end it got a lot better and I also like have a co-worker that I work with she's a huge book reader too and she was like oh yeah like I heard that's really good she's like but the first two books are slow like if you can get through the first two books the rest of the series is really 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 good so for me I kind of like hate the things that I have to like like I, sh I feel like I shouldn't have to drag my feet through the first you know two of this series like I feel like they should just all be good but I'm gonna give book two a chance like I said I'm, I'm reading it with my boyfriend because he's not a huge reader. We're really trying to get him into it. Like we started this book together. I finished it. He's still on chapter three. So I don't know when I'm going to pick up the second book because I'm read. like I said, I'm reading it with him. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. But overall for the, the, I guess like the point of this video was to find a really good romantic fantasy. I will say Throne of Glass was not f that for me. It was not very romantic. It was, I don't even know. Like it was just 
a book like there like the romance wasn't really romancing if you know what I mean so I would say like I believe I rated this book a four stars I'm gonna have to check on that later and I will edit it in and let you know if I was right or not but I'm pretty sure I rated the book four stars because it was really the end that got me like okay like I see what she's doing like this was necessary and that's why I gave it that rating because I felt like it was for a purpose that the book was kind of you know but yeah so since then I have continued on I am currently reading Bride I believe that this is a new release I heard nothing about this book I think I've told you guys before I'm not a huge fan of like or maybe I did it. Maybe I was telling somebody else. <laughs> but I'm not a huge fan of like vampire werewolf kind of thing. Like after Twilight and because I've seen Twilight so many times, it just kind of has become corny to me. Like I don't really like vampires, but it wasn't until I read Serpent and the Wings of Night that I was like, maybe vampires are okay. So I'm reading Bride. And like I said, I think this is a new release. I knew nothing about this book, never heard anything about it until I went on Goodreads and I saw that Sarah Caroli was reading it. So I was like, okay, babes, like what's that about? So this book is by Ali Hazelwood. I've never read anything by her before. So far, I'm about like 43% of the way through it. I like it. I like it a lot. Like I can already kind of see where it's going. Like the romance. What? like I the freaking world and the characters like I would say I definitely connected to I'm connected to these characters much more than I'm connected to the characters in Throne of Glass so so far I'm having a really good time and I will let you guys know how I'm content like how I feel but if you guys don't know anything about this book I'm gonna go ahead and give you a brief synopsis a dangerous alliance between a vampire bride and an alpha werewolf become becomes a love deep enough to sink your teeth in this new paranormal romance. Misery Lark, the, the only daughter of the most powerful vampire councilman of the Southwest, is an outcast again. Her days of living in anonymity, an anonym wow, anonymity among the humans are over. She's been called upon to uphold a historic peacekeeping alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the wares. And she sees little choice but to surrender herself in the exchange again where's are ruthless and unpredictable and their alpha low moreland pause the name low kind of like that l-o-w-e kind of cute anyway is no exception he rules his pack with absolute authority but not without justice and unlike the vampire council not without feeling it's clear from the way he tracks misery's every mo movement that he doesn't trust her if he only knew how right he was because misery has her own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience reasons that have nothing to do with politics or alliances and everything to do with the only thing she's ever cared about and she is willing to do whatever it takes to get back what's hers even if it means a life alone and where territory territory alone with the wolf so this is definitely a slow burn kind of romance like this, so basically what i was saying about like throne of glass like how we really didn't get the that time like between the characters to watch them go from quote-unquote enemies you know to lovers like in this book we're getting those interactions like we're getting the time with them spent having deep conversations like sharing you know their emotions and like oh like this is my past oh this is my past like we get that I'm eating it up babes so I am really hopeful for this like I really think that this might be a book that I love I hope so we'll see I will keep you guys posted uh, I'm gonna check in later beep This book is so good. <laughs> I just got to chapter 26. I just finished chapter 25. I'm about 80 something percent of the way through. Bomb, like freaking the bombshell just dropped and I'm like. That's it. Um, I have to continue reading. <laughs> I have to see what happens. But I will say, to update you guys on Bride, it is giving everything I thought it was gonna give. It's giving slow burn, it's giving the emotional connection. There's a bit of, like, it's, I'm enjoying myself. 
I'm enjoying myself. That's it. That's all I have to say.